So it looks like we finally have some sort of evidence that a lot of people in the industry knew about Diddy's party because Richard Pryor's former bodyguard just came forward to expose the things that he saw at Diddy's party. One thing we know about Richard when he was alive is that he loved to live a good life and live life to the fullest every single day of his life. According to the bodyguard, Richard once took him to Diddy's parties to show him how the biggest people in the industry partied and lived their lives and y'all he had a lot to say about it. So does this mean that Richard was a fan of the freak offs and was he really caught up in Diddy's shenanigans? Let's break it down. Now I'm not trying to say that Richard took part in the illegal things that happened at Diddy's parties because that's a whole thing that we're not going to get into especially because Richard is not here to defend himself. He still remains one of the greatest black comedians of all time and nothing can take that away from him. However, we can admit that he did kind of have his issues, especially when it comes to substances because it's a well-known fact that he took an substances. In fact, in 1980, he got so high that he poured rum all over his body and lit himself on fire. However, there are contradicting reports to this because according to People Magazine, Los Angeles police say he was burned by an explosion while freebasing Rich's burn injuries were so severe that he spent weeks in the hospital. According to an article that was published in 1989, several times a day, doctors and staff at the Sherman Oaks Community Hospital Burn Center in Los Angeles moved Richard Pryor into a whirlpool bath where hot water and antiseptics washed over his body. After the bath, they painted the third degree burns covering his torso with a silver sofa cream to fight infection. Twice a day for up to two hours at a time, they slid the injured comedian into a hyperbaric chamber, a cylinder that can triple the normal atmospheric pressure and force pure oxygen into the body to help speed healing. Last Tuesday, they operated to remove dead tissue from his body and fluid from his lung. When the doctors had done all they could, they hoped. Pryor suffered one heart attack in 1977. Another could be catastrophic. The chance of infection remained high. Then last week, almost inevitably, pneumonia set in and the tragedy deepened. It's crazy the kind of things that a man can do when he's tripping on substances. But luckily for Richard, he pulled through and managed to survive the whole ordeal. Now you'd think that this would be enough for him to put the substances down and try to clean up his act, right? Well, not exactly because it is believed that he continued to use the substances. It got so bad that it led to his wife, Jennifer Lee, leaving him in 1981 when she could no longer deal with his addiction. In an interview, she opened up about his substance use saying, after two weeks of watching him getting addicted to this stuff, I moved out. It was clear the drug had moved in and it had become his lover and everything. I did not exist. However, she also claimed that the reason he had started using in the first place was that he was allegedly trying to escape the memories of being SA'd when he was young. Apart from the substance use, Richard was also bisexual. Now he wasn't exactly open about it at the time, which isn't surprising because the industry didn't deal kindly with gay men back in the day. I mean, it's 2024 and the industry is still kind of hostile to gay men. So can you imagine what it was like back in the 80s? However, according to multiple people in his life, Richard was bisexual and didn't hide it from the people in his circle. In fact, according to his multiple people, he was pretty comfortable with his sexuality and openly explored it. Quincy Jones was one of the first to spill this tea, claiming that Richard allegedly had an affair with Marlon Brando. Speaking about Marlon, Quincy said, Marlon Brando used to go cha-cha dance with us. He could dance his b off. He was the most charming mother effer you ever met. He'd F anything, anything. He'd F a mailbox. James Baldwin, Richard Pryor, Marvin Gaye. And just in case y'all don't believe him, Richard's widow, Jennifer, also confirmed it in an interview where she said, Quincy started pouring the tea and I had to take that tea kettle away from him. Instead of putting labels on it, Richard just saw himself as a creature who wasn't afraid of exploration and experimentation. And in the 70s, of course, we were all doing it. Jennifer went on to claim that most of Richard's hooks with men were one-off encounters, often with men who were considered straight, and that's likely what happened with him and Brando. Knowing Richard, it was a one-off thing. They probably fooled around after a night dancing, hanging out, and doing <laughs> Jennifer said that back in the day, she just looked at it as boys being boys. Richard and I had she added, not with any men because he said he'd get jealous. She also said he really discussed his bisexuality in a very nuanced and profound way. I should say his bisexual experiences. He didn't consider himself bisexual, but he was very open about his sexuality and never put a label on it. However, his daughter Rain slammed the rumors and denied that her father was bi. She wrote, all you who touted faux news and preach about wanting blacks to be represented in a great light and then posted Q's interview are irrelevant and full of your own BS. Q was once a brilliant music producer who is 
losing his mind and decided to garner publicity for himself with a sensationalized interview. She also slammed her stepmother saying, then on top of it all, my dad's so-called widow validated it because she needs to keep legitimizing herself and tarnish our dad even after he's dead. She hated Q and daddy. In another post she wrote, daddy did not have relations with Brando. There were no trips to his South Pacific oasis, no flowers or love notes between, not even a film role. My dad was very open with his life, so much so that news of his relationship with a trans woman in the early 70s and 80s wasn't really newsworthy nor notable. As a child, I knew her, not as the trans person in our home, but the lady whom everyone accepted. However, Jennifer claimed that Rain was in denial about her father's sexuality, insisting that he really did have an affair with Marlo. Between him being privately bisexual and his love for substances, it's not surprising that he would have known about Diddy's parties, especially because he seemed to have been kind of freaky himself, judging by the pictures of him that recently went viral on the internet. Well, Richard's former bodyguard just revealed that he once accompanied Richard to some wild Hollywood parties where he saw some interesting things. So Flip one day looked at me and said, oh, you want to see this I don't know what the is, but I want to see something other than Malibu. And he took me to the parties. He took me to the to make me understand this is why I don't be around me. And so you've seen the all You've seen the people that was the stars and the they was doing and the smells and the the looks in their eyes and um and I was you know in my youth I kept a cutlass on me and so I know I'm walking around holding my cutlasses because you've seen people in states of mind that you never experienced nothing like that I knew people that got high but they didn't get high and did the that I was seeing mm. and so after I was exposed to it Flip took me around it about four or five times and then he said to me, you see why I don't f with that? Because, you know, you know, you had a group of people that painted their fingernails black, uh, what they call Illuminati now. It was some kind of click then. And, and in this click, you know, we wife swap and all this kind of shit. You can f my wife and stand there and watch. And, and all I seen it. I, I literally seen all these things. And it was like, um, okay. And it. In my youth, I wasn't afraid, but I knew I would have hurt somebody if I was approached. I would have hurt somebody. Child, if Richard, who openly used substances and was bi, was horrified by the things that went on at the parties, then y'all better know that it was some insane stuff going on there. The bodyguard revealed that the people at the parties were under the influence of something that he had never seen before. And you just gotta wonder what exactly it is that they were using. It's enough to make you shiver, and honestly, it's a great thing that Richard never became a constant face at such parties. Fans commented, the game never changed, just the players. The devil runs through Hollywood, and it's called Holly Weird for a reason. I lived in Hollywood and surrounding LA boroughs for a few years while starting my music career. If you have your eyes open, you'll see all kinds of occult symbolism around that town. Fame is a nasty game that I would never want to play. I do just fine in my life and career without signing away my soul and personal privacy. Anywho, y'all drop your thoughts about this in the comments, then check out this next video.